As Town just said, we're going to talk about specific workflows this morning. And we're talking, when we mean workflows, the nitty gritty of every single step, however small it may be, that you take to design a workflow at your institution. So, when we're talking about specimen digitization, first I want to point out that you'll see a lot of questions about, well, when you say digitization, what do you mean? Um, Specimen databasing is what we pretty much used to be. Well, we're databasing a specimen, we're digitizing it. Um, some people think of digitization as imaging a specimen. Well, that's part of it too. Um, also, georeferencing is adding more information to a specimen record. And so when someone says digitizing, you really kind of have to decide for yourself what you mean or ask questions. Do you mean databasing and imaging, databasing, imaging, and georeferencing, or one or each of those? So keep that in mind. Digitizing is kind of a generic term for potentially a few different things. So when you're designing a digitization workflow, um, you need to decide which of these, uh, maybe you can only do databasing, you have a database system, but you don't have a camera. You decide which one of these fit with the resources you have and then design a workflow around what you can work with right now. So we've already talked about many database um, software solutions that may be available to you at, at no cost. Um, you may have one that you're already using. Uh, iDigBio has gone over a bunch of different databases to review for the, any other ones we haven't covered yet. There are also many different camera systems available. Those we'll go over with tomorrow. And then there are a whole bunch of georeferencing training materials available. You'll get a course here and there's a lot of things online for free. And now, very quickly, we're still trying to decide, if you're still trying to decide whether or not to digitize your materials, there still are many, many benefits to doing this. Even if you're just doing skeletal data entry, again, when you're designing a workflow, maybe at this point all you want to do is create an index. Um, and that is, that is a workflow that you can um, have right now. At least an index gives you uh, sort of an overview of your entire collection. Right now, in order to know what's in your herbarium, you have to actually physically go in there, open the cabinets, and then look through all the specimens. Um, if you create at least an index to them and digitize it and make it available, people will know if what they need, you'll have. Helps you ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, we always get how many specimens of X, Y, or Z do you have from this country or from there? If you have a database system, you can query it quickly and answer questions for people. It also reduces long-term handling of specimens. You have a lot of images online. We actually do a lot of electronic loans. And so instead of shipping um, as many specimens as we used to, we image them for people who don't need to do a dissection or, a very, or use a microscope to look at specimens. We can just image the specimens, put them online, and send them um, the link. And in that sense, we actually reduce costs of shipping specimens, and we reduce the wear and tear, because shipping and handling and moving them around really can damage specimens. And when you digitize, you're backing up your collection. Uh, there are a lot of problems with, you know, water damage or fires or things that can happen in buildings, especially pest damage. If you're imaging all your specimens, you can kind of do a side-by-side -side view. You can have an old specimen, and then 10 years later, maybe there was a little bit of insect damage. But by backing up an original copy, you can see how the specimen was before. And then if you put this information out to the world, you put it through a GBIF portal, you're really getting yourself um, a lot of, a lot of um, other researchers can see exactly what they have and you have and what exactly what they may need from you. To give you a quick overview of what we're doing in terms of digitization, we are sort of putting everything online and this is why all of these workflows, we've sort of sat through, tested, we've had staff play around with a whole bunch of different things and try to figure out what's best with us. Because we are, our goal is to digitize seven million specimens in our herbarium. We've got about two million barcoded so far, but since we've switched over to rapid data entry, we still only have about a quarter of a million of those are just skeletal records. It's just a barcode and a scientific name. And then we talked about authority files. We have an authority file for tax taxonomic names. That's at about half a million records. We're at about a million specimen images at this point. And then we have a whole other bunch of authority files. People, authors, collectors, determiners, we have about 80,000 of those. We, we manage index herbariorum within our collection database. So 
That's the edited list of all herbaria and staff from the world. We also maintain a huge bibliographic citations um, index called the Index to American Botanical Literature, which has a quarter million records. And then more recently, we started adding all of our DNA aliquot and tissue sample records because most of them have a voucher specimen in the herbarium. And we had to set up a system where we can link that voucher specimen to the, um, the DNA records. We manage our entire loans program. Every time we ship or receive a specimen, that is managed within the same database. And then we've moved to, to also doing electronic floors and monographs, and then linking them to the voucher specimens. And so um, this is why we've sort of been taking on this tax to help you guys with workflows. So if we take a step back and think about big picture digitization considerations, um, you really need to start out with the scope of, of the work. Are you doing all specimens or a subset of the collection? Um, Paris got money and decided let's do everything. It's a good opportunity, we can do it all at once. Um, that, I, haven't, I don't know how often that happens. So uh, are you doing a subset, just you know, a certain family from certain regions or everything? But that's a good thing to consider up front, knowing if you're doing 100 specimens or um, 100,000 specimens. Where are the specimens and where can you put a digitization station? Are they in the same room? Are they in the same building? Will you need to transport things? All these things should be developed as part of your workflow so that you know where the bottlenecks may be. Are there any collections related to yours or yours themselves already in a digital format? Sometimes uh, collections managers will have their own records that you may want to maybe the foundation of a database. Um, researchers may have come in, come in and databased your specimens um, for their own work. Uh, if you know of any, you can ask them for a copy. That could be the foundation of a, a database. Field books, I'm going to talk about field books a little bit later on, but that's a really good source of information to start from. And then are any duplicates databases at other institutions? Can you go out to GBIF or to you know, neighboring herbaria and say, okay, do you have, I know I've distributed some duplicates to your institution. If you have digital records, can I have a copy? And you could use that as the foundation of your database. Other things to consider, what are the most important pieces of information to capture for a complete record? What is a complete record in, in, uh, in the sense of your collection. Uh, do you, we used to do the entire determination history, all the plant descriptions, every note. If someone wrote a tiny little note, we would try to capture that note in a field somewhere. Um, if you're trying to get a lot done, though, that is very time consuming. So if, when you're doing a project up front, determine, you know, well, we don't have the resources to do absolutely every little thing. We're going to focus on these 20 fields. Uh, these are things you can define up front, and then it'll help you get things done more quickly. And what is your, the state of the collection? Do you need to curate? Is there a lot of curation to do first? Uh, are, there, are the specimens damaged? A lot of times as we're curating, we find a lot of old specimens that need to be remounted or repaired. So do you want to pull those out first, get them fixed, and then get them integrated back in the collection so that then you can go through rapid data entry? These are things that maybe um, before you try to start barcoding things, you want to take care of first. And then how will you assign unique identifiers to the specimens? Are you going to go with barcodes? What kind of barcodes? And John talked a lot about identifiers and embedding identifiers in databases already. And keep in mind, the specimen labels are a starting point. Other things to think of are, what about typos and mistakes on labels? What is your plan to deal with them up front? You don't want everyone, if you have you know, two or three people entering data, you don't want them all doing it differently. So if you define up front the protocols, then everyone can do everything consistently. Collectors change the formats of their labels, of their own names on their own labels. They may have, um, women may have changed their name as they have gotten married. So what, how are you going to deal with that? You don't want to have the same person entered 20 different times in your database system. You know, specimens can be incorrectly identified. Uh, are you going to redetermine things before you uh, database them? Do you enter the determination in, on your, in your database exactly as it is on the label, or are you going to look for authority files up front and try to embed those in your database first? Because um, you don't want to be putting in all the orthographic variants, wrong authors, all those sorts of things in a database. Your locations or coordinates could be wrong. 
they could map to the ocean. If it's a tree, uh, you're not going to find it in the middle of the ocean. So these are other sorts of things. Do you want to clean those things up as you're going, or do you want to plan to do data cleanup at the end of a big databasing project? And so keep in mind, all these things, you should try to answer these questions now, and then we'll design workflows for how to deal with them. And do your specimens have derivatives, and do you want to keep track of them? So when you're choosing a database system or doing data entry up front, uh, are there living organisms that you want to keep track of? Multiple specimens or parts of specimens that you're going to have? Uh, a tissue sample and your specimen? A wood collection? Seed bank? All these things. Microscope slides? Have someone taken a part of a specimen and made an SEM stub of it? Do you want to keep track of that? And then all the right spirit collections, tissue samples, DNA sequences. And then all the publications, because a lot of publications will then cite your specimens once they've been used. Do you want to put that information back in your database so that you've tied together all the piece of pieces of information that be, may be related to one collection? Now, staff for digitization projects. Is it just going to be the curator? Is it just you? Is that all you have? And if so, how can you fit certain, some of these tasks into your daily routine? Because all the workflows that you work on and that you're going to sort of prepare you know, have to be based on, well, if I had 20 people on staff, this is how we'd do it. Um, that's not reality you know, <laughs> for most people. And then within your, if you have maybe one or two or three people, as you write a workflow, identify who will do each part in each step of the workflow. And things to keep in mind, what type of expertise do you have on staff? Because that may also help you determine what kinds of um, equipment or databases you, you'll be able to manage. So if it's a very complicated piece of equipment, who's on staff to manage it? Even if you could get someone in to set up a piece of a complicated piece of equipment, who's going to maintain it then? Everything breaks, I'll tell you right now. Everything breaks at some point and somebody's going to have to fix it. So who's going to do the troubleshooting? Is there um, someone you can call? Is there a, a partner institution that may have the same piece of equipment that could troubleshoot with you? Try to keep in mind that you will need some technical help. Um, and you know, Google is a great resource for technical help. Every problem I've ever had, I Google it and see what I find. YouTube has a lot of videos. There's a lot of things that, even if you've never known anything about it before, you can learn by Googling it. Um, who is responsible for backups? This is one of the most important pieces to define for your staff. Somebody has to have this responsibility and you should write it up and make everyone known because if I think Kim's backing it up and Kim thinks I'm backing something up and neither of us have done it, three months ahead we could lose all that work because no one's done it. So just make sure that you have clear policies in place so that every part of your workflow it's clear who's doing what. And then the best thing you can do are use students, volunteers, and interns to the greatest extent you can as your digitizers because they're great, they have a lot of energy. Um, we have kids who come in and blow us away at the numbers of specimens they can image per hour. Um, we try to get on grants small stipends or if you have a work study program and you can integrate students into a workflow somehow, uh, they're usually wonderful to work with. This is my favorite, favorite one because um, people always forget that digitization isn't over when the specimens are digitized, um, especially higher administra administrators. You think, okay, you got a grant, um, the Global Plants Initiative came in for a lot of uh, the botanists here, the Mellon Foundation paid money, here's you know, a piece of equipment and please digitize these 1,000 specimens. Um, and then that's it. Administrators think, okay, you've digitized those thousand, now you're done. You're never really done. Digitization will make your life so much easier in so many ways, but at the same time, it's creating a whole nother collection to manage. You have physical collection now and an electronic collection. And both of them have uh, tasks that you'll need to continue to work with in, in parallel at the same time. So your database system, again, needs to be kept up to date. Who's going to migrate? Every database will have new versions. Who's going to migrate to the next version? Um, oftentimes, 
a problem happens where you have one version and then you don't update to the next one and suddenly five years later they've come out with a tenth version and since you haven't upgraded to the versions in between your version's not compatible with the tenth version.